All right, well, welcome to the first week of our missional theology class. It's about 5.30 a.m. on day one, and uh, I know that each of you is eager to, uh, to, to start this course and, and get the information uploaded so that you can begin to make your headway. Um, my name is Jeff Stark. I'm going to be your instructor for the, for the course. I'm an associate professor of theology here at Olivet. Uh, in fact, I've been an adjunct. I'm still technically an adjunct uh, this semester. However, uh, starting January 1st of 2019, I'll be full faculty and so this is, uh, I don't know, I've, I've taught uh, several courses now. Um, this is my second time teaching this particular course, and it is a passion of mine. This is what I did my doctorate of ministry in, uh, was in missional theology. And so a lot of what uh, you'll be dealing with in this course is emerges from my experiences within the context of that program. Let me show you a little bit about myself, uh, because I think it's important for you to understand me. And then also on day three, you're going you're gonna to have a missional context essay due, which will help me to get to know you a little bit more and about the areas of ministry that you currently find yourself serving. Uh, I did not grow up in the church. Uh, in fact, I, I did, I, maybe up until about 10 years old, we went, we went a little bit, but after that, nothing until I was about 25 years old. I was in the military. Uh, my wife and I had married right out of college. We both lived an extremely dysfunctional and broken story. Uh, we were both alcoholics and uh, just sort of lived on the, on the backside of a lot of... Uh, uh, dysfunctional behaviors. And uh, about three years into our marriage, I was deployed to Kosovo. In fact, I was in uh, Skopje, Macedonia at the time. And uh, the Lord seized upon a moment of brokenness. Uh, I wasn't necessarily looking for him. He came looking for me. And he found me on the backside of nowhere, um, invited me into a relationship with him in a little chapel all by myself in, uh, in a, on, a, on an army base in Skopje, Macedonia. And I uh, became a Christ follower at that time. Uh, my wife uh, became a Christ follower about a month later, back in the States, completely disconnected, different separ separated set of events. Uh, she and I actually weren't having much uh, contact with each other at the time at all. And uh, that was part of a promise that God had made the night that I became a Christ follower, is that uh, if I turned my life to him and served him, uh, that uh, he would rescue my, my family and my marriage. And, and uh, God had proved himself faithful, and so I was so deeply thankful for that. Uh, I was still in the military when I when I when I arrived back in the states. Uh, felt a call to ministry pretty early on in my journey. I sat on it because I didn't know what that was. I didn't know what to call that. I didn't know how to articulate it, express it. And I also didn't want to be just the the brand new Christian who wanted to run around and save the world, right? So um, I, I wasn't eager to 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 jump too too quickly into something that I didn't really understand much about. However, I was uh, had the privilege of being uh, discipled well by a number of individuals at Clarksville First Church in Nazarene, the place where my wife had given her life to the Lord. And uh, during that time, I began to explore what it would look like for me to step more fully into ministry. And uh, about a year and a half later, um, I was getting out of the military, and then uh, I was invited uh, on staff at uh, Clarksville First Church in Nazarene to serve uh, in a variety of different roles. Uh, sort of part-time at first, I was uh, not only a staff member, but I was also a bus boy and, and checkout clerk at Shoney's, uh, kind of doing whatever I could to make ministry work because I just had a passion to, to serve the Lord in whatever capacity that he had called me to do so. Uh, started a master's program at uh, Trevecca Nazarene University pretty early on. Uh, spent about the next three and a half years there at, at, at uh, Trevecca. Ended up, I was on the GI Bill, so I ended up finishing a master's degree and almost a second master's degree there because I had the money to do so. Uh, when my instructor had told me that I probably need to, to, needed to look at a different direction. And so I went on to finish another degree at uh, Vanderbilt University and then uh, several years later um, ended up uh, finishing a, a doctorate degree at uh, Lipscomb University in Nashville uh, in missional theology and spiritual formation. From a ministry standpoint, I was on staff at Clarksville First Church of Nazarene in Tennessee for about seven years, filling a variety of different roles, ending up sort of an executive pastor by the time I was my time there was completed. I planted a church within a church there in Clarksville. Um, it was a church that ministered to uh, street folks, a lot of uh, homeless and, and drug addicts, but also um, others within the context of the community as well. It was a church that grew up to about 40, 45 people in about two years. Um, and it was a great, just eclectic group of people that I learned from as we began to work together and minister well together. We had a Compassion Ministry Center there in Clarksville, did a lot of very uh, intensive discipleship 
development while I was there in Clarksville and had the privilege of being a college pastor at the same time uh, while I was there. I, was, I sort of wore a number of different hats and, and loved uh, that opportunity. Um, I, about seven years into my ministry, I, I got a call to, to make a shift to a church in a small rural uh, community. And uh, in this small rural community of about 2,000 people, 8,000 in the entire county, I pastored a church that was 100 years old. It was an amazing church full of great people who, over the course of its, of its journey, had continually made investments in the next generation. And so um, we were sitting at a, we were in a church of about uh, 250 people in a town of 2,000 uh, in a county of 8,000. Um, and we, we began to reach out and really begin to dream about how we can be missionally engaged in meaningful ways in our community. During that time, I had the privilege of coaching high school football. My wife worked at the high school, and so we saw that as really our sort of missional context. Uh, so we had an opportunity to really minister to students within that community. Um, and, and that was a part of our bigger, broader purposes there in our church, um, which really helped us to to be effective and intentional in reaching the children across the community. This is something that that church had consistently made its missional um, focus and at one point um, and I think still today they have around 160 to 180 students from the high school and middle school that gather at that uh, church every Wednesday night for an after school program it's an amazing program run by some amazing people and uh, we had the privilege of being a part of that for a time or for a season uh, God had laid upon my heart early on in my ministry a desire and a passion for planting churches I really believe that it's the best way to reach those who are disconnected from uh, from the journey of faith and so uh, I, I was going to plant a church in 2006. I passed on that. Um, thought that that ship had sailed sailed past me. Uh, but in 2014, I was called to a church in Pekin, Illinois called Bridgeway Community Church that had a passion for planting churches. So I thought, if I'm not the person that's going to be planting, uh, maybe God would enable me to be the person who could send out other planters. So in 2014, my wife and my kids and I, we moved to uh, Pekin, Illinois, where we've been ever since. Um, and I serve as the lead pastor of Bridgeway Community Church that has a vision of uh, igniting a movement of culturally relevant, radically loving, rapidly reproducing churches, spreading hope throughout the world. That's our vision. We want to we want to plant churches that plant other churches. Uh, and over the course of these four years, we've developed a church plant residency program. We've helped plant a church in Peoria, Illinois. Plant a church in North Carolina. Um, in Raleigh. Um, I'm coaching a church planner who's going to be moving to Switzerland, coaching another church planner who's going to be moving to from Durham, uh, North Carolina to Madison, Wisconsin to plant a church. And we're constantly looking to engage and develop relationships with those with whom we can partner to, to plant other churches. We currently have two campuses and we're working on uh, a third and a fourth uh, over the course of the next few years. So uh, God has been really helping us. Uh, the, the community of Pekin itself is a very broken community. Um, it is rife with uh, drug addiction problems. It's a, it's a working poor community for the most part. Um, it is 98.7% uh, white Caucasian, and that is intentional. Um, and what I mean by that is that Pekin has a history of racism uh, that runs deep within this community. And so one of the things that we have to think through consistently is how can we be missionally effective in addressing the sort of the elephant in the room that constantly exists that nobody wants to talk about. And that is, is how, um, I, I would say, how our implicit biases continually shape our missional imagination in the way we engage those who are most unlike us. So, so uh, God, is, God, I think, is helping us uh, to, to wrestle with that and to navigate that and has been doing so for the last uh, four years. And so I'm thankful that that is the case. Um, we've also started a recovery program that I think has been helpful in addressing some of the addiction issues that exist here in Pekin. Uh, we have about 100 people that gather every single week for our, for our uh, uh, recovery program. And, uh, and it's really been a, a blessing to, to watch as our folks have really sort of invested themselves within the life of our two communities, Pekin and Market Heights. Uh, that's where our second community is. So missional theology is a real passion of mine. And we're going to spend some time over the course of this, uh, this, this class really talking about how do we be contextually sensitive? How do, we, how do we see the church in a different way where it's not just a place that people come, but the people that go out? And what does that look like to make that shift? And we're going to be spending time throughout the first several weeks setting up sort of that shift and that dynamic that needs to take place in the lives of, of the people that we pastor and, and maybe even in our lives as well. Um, we're going to build upon that as we begin to look about how do we, how do we move into and how do we engage 
our community into intentional ways. And so this is really going to be quite a journey, and I'm looking forward to get to knowing you. Some of I've had in the past, some of you, this is my first time meeting you, and so I'm really looking forward to getting to know you and looking forward to the journey that is ahead for each one of us uh, on this process. Now, the, one of the things I want to tell you, I, maybe I should say a couple of things. you got to stay up on your reading. There's a lot of reading, but this is a master's level course. And there is a thing called master's reading where you where you begin to really sort of work through material. Now, you're probably not going to read every single word in the book. However, I do expect intentional engagement with the material that I'm assigning. So at some point, you will uh, do reading responses on the books. And I don't want to look at these, these reading responses and wonder if you've read the text or if you understand the major premises that the books are making. Yes, there's a lot of reading, but that is master's work. Uh, you are interacting and conversing with uh, authors in these fields and you are you are evaluating the claims that they're making and you are um, offering your perspectives or even counterclaims at times. So you're going to offer those responses. There's going to be several lectures. Now the first two lectures are the longest lectures. They go about uh, 25 to 30 minutes a piece. After that it's really like three or four lectures, maybe five lectures a week. Um, and they run anywhere between seven and ten minutes a piece, and so uh, there's a, they're a little shorter, a little easier to digest on a smaller level. And so um, I want you to stay up on the on the the assignments. There's some I think all of the assignments really sort of push us in one direction, and that is towards sort of an integrative essay at the end of of uh, this time uh, that we have at this semester. And so I want to really encourage you to stay up on that. Um, we will have a couple times throughout the, the course and I will get that information out to you um, as soon as possible that we will meet via online and then we'll have a discussion uh, online and uh, answer any questions that you might have about who we are, or, or excuse me, about what we're doing um, or uh, what, what we're up to in this class. And so that's just a little bit of an overview. I'm um, looking forward again to get to know you. Uh, remember your missional context essays are due on uh, the third day, which is Wednesday. And so I want to encourage you to make sure that you are uh, engaging that uh, immediately uh, and getting that uh, to me as soon as possible. Um, and uh, looking forward to, to meeting you and getting to know you better. Thanks. Have a great day.